Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the At The Races Royal Ascot preview night. Of course, Royal Ascot is just around the corner all five days on Sky Sports Racing. You'll see every race there and arguably the best consecutive five days racing in the world. When you have a meeting as good as that, you need a preview night, which a bundle of cash has been spent on to bring you the best guests in the business. That may happen during another preview <laughs> night. But tonight, we have the Weaver Shark with me in the studio. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, good evening. When you mention that, mm. you know, five spectacular days of racing, um, you know, full coverage, as you mentioned, as well. And, you know, a, a meeting that people all over the globe will be tuning in to, to watch. You know, it, it's got huge coverage and we have a nice bit of international flavour as well. We really do. Now, I was looking through some of the big races, Shark, obviously, as I do. I put in a lot of preparation for shows like this because I have to carry people like you a lot of the time. Um, Queen Anne Stakes, favourite, British. King Stan Stakes, favourite, British. And you go through Prince of Wales' Stakes, favourite, British. Uh, Ask a Gold Cup, favourite British. British. And you kind of think, you don't really need to bother with an Irish guest, do you? Because it's not like Cheltenham, oh, where they go on and very, on, or the Grand hard. National. Because you kind of think, if they get a winner, they will have done well. But we have, I'm afraid, because basically, he's cheap, and he's on there. Here, look at him, the little, <laughs> look at that little grin. It is, of course, our one and only Kevin Blake. And Kevin, looking forward to you not really being able to tip many Irish horses for this. Matt, I, I'm getting a bit older. My memory isn't great. Where was the favourite in the Grand National train? And that is Kevin Blake, who is with us tonight <laughs> on the Royal Ascot <laughs> preview show. Great to have him uh, with us. Now, remember, uh, obviously, if you're watching now, but if you want to check out where you can see the show in the future, Facebook Shark, on the At The Races website, all the W's at theraces.com. YouTube. YouTube. It's going to be a link on Instagram at some stage. So there, look, uh, all the guide you need is on all the uh, at theraces.com forward slash Ascot. I'm sure, uh, Kev, you've got something on there, haven't you? Uh, I'm never too far away, Matt. Hard to escape me, as you, as you know well yourself. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, if, if you're a jockey riding at Royal Ascot, I'm sure Kevin will be telling you how to ride the track because he knows all those kind of things and, and um, basically all the trap bars, all that kind of stuff. Doesn't he loves listen, that. You, you, telling you, people you how say, to do uh, things. We, we should never underestimate the runners coming over and they will be fairly strongly represented. A um, little bit of a disappointment that the, the main Coventry hope is not going to come over. I think he's going to stay at home for the, for the railway and we'll get on to that a little bit later on. But um, listen, Kevin, um, th there will be a, a strong contingent coming over. And, of course, with, with the way that Aidan's horses have been coming to the boil at the moment, they've always got to be respected. Oh, for sure, Jason. And look, this is, this is, it's been a bit of a wait for an awful lot of trainers because, like you say, th this is a massive week. You know, for an awful lot of flat trainers in Ireland, you know, there's a big red circle around Royal Ascot from the very start of the season. And unfortunately, last year... You know, we, we didn't see many Irish horses. Um, Aidan O'Brien was able to come over. There was a handful of others. Irish horses weren't allowed running the handicaps. So for an awful lot of trainers, um, they didn't get to have a crack at it last year. So they'll be absolutely rearing to go this year. And uh, I know that there'll be, there'll be very strong numerical representation. And, and hopefully we might have a winner or two, Matt. Just one or two will keep us quiet. Uh, yeah, more well, one or two. Well done. Uh, but it, it was. It will. I think it will be very similar to 2020. It'll be like, who are you? when it comes to the Irish. But, of course, we welcome them with open arms. Not many, so many French horses. I think we're likely to see one or two, yes. but not many more than that. We'll get we, on to that a bit later. We've got the unbeaten sprinter coming over. Yeah, the um, Going to be on quicker conditions. And if you were to look at the, the long-range forecast, it could well end up being fairly lively throughout Ascot. Uh, I can remember one dreaded year. I think Aidan came over and, and walked the track and it was just a little bit too quick. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's, ho let's hope that it's all safe for everybody. Yeah, I think the horse you're trying to remember is Swayza. That's the one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbeaten, four from four, by Night of Thunder. Yeah, that's the one. Francois Rojo used to be... Rohar. Uh, what? Rohar. 
Right. Um, <laughs> so let's get into the first big race. Crack! I've had to silence them both. It's, uh, they almost might as well go. I'll just do it on my own. Um, Queen Anne, we're going to kick off with one mile, the older horses, and basically this should be a penalty kick because let's start with you, Kevin, really, because if you actually go through, I mean, I don't think some of them will run that are in the betting. I mean, for instance, Love is in the betting for this in one or two lists. Third favourite for the Queen Anne stakes in one or two. Um, isn't it fair to say that if Palace Pier turns up in his lockage form, he's just better than this lot, isn't it? I mean, you can go against odds on favourites, Kev, but Palace Pier has to underperform not to win, doesn't he? Yeah, look, clearly the best horse, clear in all the figures. But, you know, there's just one... You know me now, Matt, I like to have an old pick at a favourite, and there's just one or two things that would worry me a small bit about this lad here. And I've said it a few times about him, and, and it hasn't really caught up with him, but he missed the kick. He likes to be ridden quietly, and even at the, the five-day stage here, I don't see any pace, you know. And, and when you're an odds-on fav like this fella's going to be, all the jockeys in the race are surely going to be having to think to themselves, how do we get this fella beat? And going steady in front when he ends up in, in a poor position out the back might be the way it happens. Uh, and the other thing is he, he's never raced on, on proper good to firm ground since his debut. Um, he might well be just fine on it, but all of his very best form has come on slightly softer ground. So, you know, maybe I'm clutching, but those are the two things that I'd clutch at if I was trying to find a reason to take him on. No, I mean, he has won seven from eight by just missing the break a little bit. So he hasn't <laughs> done too badly. But that one defeat did come at Ascot, although he has won at the track. OK, yeah, but a fair point. Look, and he, he, he's going to be incredibly short. Lots of people, he'll be the, the cornerstone for, for many a bet, if you like, throughout the meeting, just to get that acker up and running. Order of Australia, um, I'm, I'm fascinated. He must have really hoodwinked the team early on because he went as far as a mile and a half. So he was either just very much like myself, always sleeping and had his head in the manger and not doing a tap. And then all of a sudden he's found a leg from somewhere because this win, all right, he was, he was a big prize, but he beat Circus Maximus. We all know what an absolute rock-solid performer he is. So, um, yeah, he, he's one of those. He caught them a little bit unawares, Kev. Yeah, he seemed to do. You know, look, he's bred for a mile and a half. He won over a mile and a half. It, it was really, uh, you could say it was a bit of an inspired move to just try the mile. Um, I don't think many people would have. Uh, and they, they got all the beans over there at Keeneland. And I think they're very much setting out now with their, with their stall set that they're going to train him like a miler, campaign him like a miler. And sure, look, on that one piece of form, you know, he, he's in the mix. You know, his form wouldn't be as, wouldn't be quite as, uh, quite as fancy, I suppose, as Palace Piers. But yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how he goes. And if you okay, Matt, I want to ask you, the likes of a top rank who was a long way behind a Palace Pier um, when he, they ran at Newbury, but he had looked very, very good as if he was destined to step up into sort of the, the top level grade, if you like, when he won on his return at Doncaster carrying a penalty. He's someone who we have, we've only just scratched the surface, but again, ground dependent would be a little bit of a worry if he even turns up. Yeah, trained by James Tate, who's, who's a Group 1 winning trainer, not yet, but bubbling under. You know he's going to get a Group 1 on the board uh, sooner rather than later. But, you know, I, I look, the odds tell the story here. Whether he is a bit iffy at the start or not, Palace Pier is the best miler in Europe. This is not a strong renewal, I think, of the Queen Anne, judged by what we've got on that list there. Order of Australia did win the Breeders' Cup, but was put in its place very much in Chartin after that. I don't know what, Lopi Y Fernandez, Kev, there were one or two occasions against Palace Pier last season where he travelled up like a machine, but I've decided, rightly or wrongly, that he's one of these horses that when he drops to Group 2 or Group 3, he looks like a million dollars, but when he's asked to go through the pain barrier against a top notcher, he doesn't really do it, and I would hazard a guess that the reason he ran well at the Breeders' Cup might have been drug-related in that he'll have been on a bit of Lasix and that might have helped him with, perhaps, in my opinion, what might be against him in Europe. Um, well, I think there was an element of, of the order of Australia's about him in that they didn't really know which way to go with him trip-wise last season and they probably ended up where they needed to be um, in, in that over mile is probably his trip. And in fairness to him, I, I was very impressed with his comeback at Leopardstown. He was very impressive there. Look, you're right, it was a lower level, lower class of horse, but, but he really whomped him. 
Uh, and I think the ground is a genuine excuse in the lock inch. He'll get rattling fast ground at Ascot, you'd imagine. And I just I want to see him at one chance in a group one on fast ground, just, just to be sure. Because, you know, he's a big, scopey horse. He could be a better four-year-old. Again, you're grasping a little bit, but at least you're getting a fair price for your trouble if you're going to give him another chance. We, we were talking about each-way horses, Matt. Um, if Tilsit were to, to turn up in here, was put in at a very big price. He's got form beating the likes of my Oberon. He was behind Skeletti over further. You know, he's coming back down to a trip that may well suit him, and he seems to... Uh, be getting a little bit better with his racing. He was a right handful early on in his career, but he just, you know, people will look at it as an each way play. You know, yeah. they, they'll say, okay, Palace Pierce is going to win, but we can get something at a price to hit yeah. the board. I'd, I'd stick in Lord Glitters at 30 to 1 if you just wanted an each way bet who has the ability on a going day to pop up in races like this. If, but I mean, essentially, I, 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 I just think this also hack up Palace Pierce. I think it'd be totally different gravy. It'll win by street. I might have Lord Glitters yeah. to run on for a place. So that's one for Britain in the Queen Anne. Kev, you, you'd be with us here, wouldn't you, really? Yeah, look, really, yeah. I think the, the only thing that'll get him beat is the run of the race and bad luck, which is a possibility, but look, he's the best horse, and there's, there's little doubt about that. OK, well, we'll go to the King's Stand, and we know who's the best horse here straight away. The favourite, we know, is the best sprinter. The difference here is, of course, we haven't seen him. So whether you fancy Batash or whether you want to lay him really depends whether you're the kind of person who has respect for his trainer, Charlie Hills, or whether you're a man who has no respect for the trainer and doesn't think the trainer is capable of producing him fit and ready to go first time. So it'd be interesting to see how the team goes here um, <laughs> because it's really a respect question, whether you respect Charlie Hills or whether you have no respect for the trainer at all. Batash at seven to four, um, five to one winter power, Oxted at six, Liberty Beach at eight, was good the other day, extravagant kid at 10, Maven at 10 and Gamarro at 12, with you better believe it, at 12 and 16 bar. But if you were taking him on, if you were taking him on, you've got a lot of horses running for you, have haven't you? You, you have. Got, I think you've got you nothing. Have. For an informed Batash, you've got nothing running for you because he'd destroy all of this lot. But let's ask Kevin, because he's a, he always talks very much on his blogs about respect for people and stuff like that. So, <laughs> Kev, um, Batash, we're looking at him now. He's just different gravy, isn't he? Yeah, at his very best, there's absolutely no doubt, Matt, but you're taking a lot on trust. This is him winning the race last year. It was his first time to win this race, having been beaten in it a couple of times. And look, this wasn't a great renewal, I don't think. I don't think he needed to be at his very best last season. And look, the, the, the concerns are kind of twofold, Matt. He's seven. Look, he has to start regressing at some stage. And look, probably even more importantly, he's had a fracture. They had to pin it. You know, they, they didn't get it. it. Charity hasn't had it for as long as he would have liked you know, to get him ready for this race in, in times past. And the ground's going to be very fast. And if he's feeling anything, you know, it's going to catch him and ask it. So at the price he is, as much as and I do love this horse. He's fabulous. He's probably the best sprinter um, that, that I've seen in my time in racing over five furlongs, to be honest. Um, I, I, I have to take him on, I think. Just, uh, just concerns about how much ability he'll retain after what's been through this winter, etc. And look, I think one that's emerging. And look, you're, you're dead right, Matt. Form wouldn't be in the same parish as a as a peak Batash. But I was really impressed with Winter Power last time at York. Um, she was very impressive at the last run of two. It was hard to know whether to believe that or not. And she came out first time back at York and, and ran even bigger. As you really put a decent field of sprinters to soar from the front and um, showed an awful lot of speed. And I'd say there could be more to come from her now. Tim Easterby's talked very big about her. You get the Phillies allowance. We've seen some activity Phillies over five in the last couple of years. And this might be the latest one. I'm looking forward to her. OK, Kev. I mean, is it fair to say that from the writings you do for the website, you're, you're a stats man, yeah? You're, you're, you, you consider yourself a stats man? No, yeah, that's probably fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so in the last 17 runnings of the King Stand Stakes... Nine out of 17, which I'd say is a fairly high statistic, have been aged six or seven. But you say at the age of seven, Batash is too old. Well, I'm saying time catches well, up. Are, are you saying he's too old or not? 
Well, I'm saying that last year he wasn't quite as good as he was the year before. He's had a fracture since. You know, I think you'd be ambitious to think he could get back to his very best. Could it happen? Of course it could. But Everton has a price, Matt, and at the type of price he is, I'm inclined to, to look aside. And I'll, I'll give him a roar if he wins, because I love the horse. But um, from a betting point of view, I'll have to take him off. OK, so Kevin's made that clear then, despite the fact that nine out of the last 17 King Stan Stakes winners have been aged roughly around Batash. At either six or seven, a, a vast majority, um, Batash is Come now on, too I'll, old. I'll, I'll, Away from him, um, extravagant kid. Um, I know that um, Ryan Moore has been booked again after that combination, managed to get it done over in Dubai. Maven, who's going to appreciate the quick conditions, um, is one that you've got running for you. Oxted, I don't think we've seen the better no. or the best of him in, in two runs so far this year. He got in a bit of a bumping match at Newmarket. Um, he then was behind Starman. A little disappointed, but again... Good to soft conditions. It's going to be slightly quicker, and I think that will suit him. We can see him here a length behind Glenn Shiel, and all reports were that um, he just was a little bit short of work coming into this particular contest. So I don't think we've... We know he's got good form on the track, Kev, and we probably haven't seen the best of him this year yet. I'll tell you what, it's an interesting shout coming back to five. They didn't even enter him in the in the Diamond Jubilee. You know, they made up their mind they're going to drop him back to five. All his best form is at six. Uh, and I suppose what makes it an interesting shout is, you know, since he won the July Cup, he did have a bit of a, a bit of a throat issue. I think he had a trapped epiglottis that they went in and operated on. And you know, sometimes horses with those breeding issues, dropping them back in trip can be a help to them. Um, so I, I think they're they're very much experimenting, and it'll be fascinating to see how it goes. I think you'll have enough enough pace for it. Um, but, you know, th this is high-level stuff and where he'll be quite quick enough at this level remains to be seen. Of course, Ram Moore's been on in the last twice because Fallon because couldn't ride in the first or well, second time he's stuck in front. But could the, I wonder if the Fallon factor back on Oxted, he, he seemed to really get on well with... I know they were beat the last time they ran at the end of last season, but he, he did seem to have a bit of a rapport for this oh, horse. Absolutely. And, of course, very early on in his career, every jockey needs a, a big horse to really sort of springboard them and, and get them going. And he was that horse, wasn't he? You know, winning on him at Doncaster, staying with him, getting the Abenant done, staying with him, getting the July Cup victory on the board. So there are lots of things to suggest that he may well be a type who runs particularly well for a certain rider. Um, quick conditions, Kevin's saying, down to the minimum. I think there are a few things in his favour, you know, for a massive run, especially back down at the minimum. If Batash is going to be up on the front, Winter Power is going to be up yeah. on the front, the American horses are going to be bang there, breathing down Batash's neck. He's not going to have that sort of luxury of being able to canter on up towards the front end. And obviously he has to get it right at the gate as well, Batash. And Liberty Beach, mm. we must give a mention, yep. came back with a nice win the other day. Yes. Um, wasn't totally dominant, but won. And she was only a three-year-old when... She raced against Batash last time, wasn't she? Was she a three-year-old? Uh, I, I think she's a little bit older, yeah. Liberty Beach. She's, uh, she was yeah, a three-year-old. Yeah, yeah. So now she's older. So but she's... She, uh, she made all at Haydock, and I don't think that's actually her best run style. I just oh. think that she mm. was so far do dominant, and she cantered down to the furlong marker, and then it was guts and determination up to the line. I think she's better with a bit of a lead. OK, well, let's, let's rattle through selections, because I think we've... we've Talked about probably the horses that are going to... Kevin, Kevin Blake, obviously not Batash because he's too old at the age of seven. Yeah, I'll go, I, I was looking there while you were talking, Matt. The last seven-year-old to win was the great soul power. There hasn't been loads of them, but I, I'll, go for, I'll go for winter no, there'll power. No, there have been nine six- or seven-year-olds since 2000. <laughs> I know you've tried to... You've, you've checked it to see if I'm right or wrong, and annoyingly you realise I'm right, so now you're frustrated, so you're trying to, trying to <laughs> come up with any stat you can. Yeah, yeah, you got it in one match. You frustrated the life out of me here, all right. <laughs> it's a horrible individual, isn't I'll it? I'll go with Oxted. I think yeah. Oxted will give you a real good run for your money. I do, yeah. OK. Um, I, I think that he'll, he'll um, be on the premises at his uh, try back down at the minimum. OK. Kevin's with? Um, Winter Power. Winter Power. Yeah, the youngster against... Because Batash is too old. And you've, got, you've gone for the favourite in the Queen Anne and the favourite in the King Stan. OK. <laughs> I'm actually too tempted OK, King OK. We'll come to that later on in the show. Um, I certainly won't be tipping the favourite in the St James's Palace Stakes, though. 
despite the fact that I think he's really good. If he runs, then that's poetic flair. Um, but he's running three already, so there's no reason why he can't run in four. Um, and I actually think he should be... He should, he should be almost unbeaten, I think, because I think he should have won in France. I think he should have won in Ireland. Yeah, he should be unbeaten, Poet. Really? Yep. Um, Mostaf Daff at four to one. Highland Avenue at five. Battleground has been useless at seven. Uh, Lucky Vega is good at Newmarket, but not so good in Ireland at seven. Chindit, fascinating at eight. Thunder Moon. Well, actually, let's go straight to you, Kev, because Thunder Moon, I thought, was a good thing in the 2000 Guineas and ran like the worst horse on earth. And I've got to say, and I know you won't say this, so I'll say it, in the paddock, Thunder Moon looked tiny. He didn't look like Am some... I... No, no, Thunder Moon came into the paddock, had the fifth leg out. He was <laughs> been an absolute nightmare. Well, that was the biggest the... thing about the him. The nightmare in the prelims. <laughs> <laughs> that really was the biggest thing about him, because he looked tiny everywhere else. Um, uh... Uh, and then I did message Joseph about the Irish... And usually, to be fair to Joseph, he will mess. He just blanked me completely, which made me think, "Crikey, <laughs> this horse is really not going well at all." What's the latest, Kevin? Can you can you give anything away? Is he even alive? Yeah, look, there's a good chance he'll run. I'd say, Matt. Um, look, like Jason says, you know, it just went horribly wrong at Newmarket. He, he just got very, very culty, which would be out of character for him. And, and he just never went the yard. Like normally, you can rely on to, to travel very strongly, and he was beaten, you know, after two furlongs. So. Um, sure, look, you'd hope he'd bounce back from it because um, he surely is much, much better than that. And look, you're right, I've he was never you, a big I've horse. heard you sound a lot more confident about that. And this is not like a Cheltenham preview night when you're all over. You sound as if you're not convinced at all. Well, you just don't know, Matt. Like, it was well, you, completely you, unexpected. You live in the yard, man. It was completely unexpected what happened at Newmarket. So if he takes you by surprise once, there's always a chance he could take you by surprise twice. But he, he's been A1 since... You know, you think the round mile would suit him. He, he, everyone knows he's a, he's a speed horse, you know. Uh, and look, all being well, he'll get there. You're right, he's not overly big, but he wasn't overly big last year. It didn't stop him winning the Group 1. So, um, you know, if uh, as, as Fancy O'Brien used to say, Matt, if size had anything to do with speed, a cow would outrun a rabbit. <laughs> What, what a big... great line that is. I really? love that line, <laughs> yes. Well, nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> um, OK, well, I tell you what, just on what he said there, you would not touch Thunder Moon for the St James's Palace Stakes with a barge pole, would you? Um, he look, doesn't believe it's got you, any you, chance. The, the, the thing is, look, this is a, a preview <laughs> looking at, at what's going to happen. We, we will be able to see what he's like in the paddock beforehand. That'll be absolute key, won't it, to, to his chances. Um, he certainly looked fit enough, I'll tell you. He was ready to go. There, there wasn't a pick on him at Newmarket, unlike the Aidan O'Brien team. They, they were so, so far behind when they came over and battleground... Uh, and Wembley, who turned up there. Battleground was backed into 9-2 to two favouritism mm. for the 2000. Um, he must have looked like an absolute monster in the prelims over in America because they well, backed look at him, him here. Hey, they backed him Dwarfs, into favouritism. And he, he really um, has to be given another chance. You can't... He's only had one run, Matt, this year in the 2000, and he could quite easily put that form, yeah. uh, well, just, was, just throw was, it out completely. He was meant to run in the Irish 2000. They took him out because of the ground. Um, Fast conditions. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a lot in his favour. Mm. He has, Kev, but uh, he, the only thing that worries me is just how badly Wembley ran in the Irish. I mean, St Mark's Basilica looks so far clear now of their three-year-old Colts. Yeah, look, it's a weird one as well because there was very little between Wembley and, and St. Mark's last year, you know? Uh, and Wembley has just disappointed twice, like, quite badly. He wasn't as bad last time, but still pretty disappointing now. And You know, I'd be with Jason. I know Jason was very, very fond of Battleground last year. And I, I, you have to be forgiving, I think, of what happened at Newmarket. I know Frankie thought he got very unbalanced. He got disunited going down into the dip there. And it was just messy. You know, they've given him his time. The ground was too slow for him at the Curra. And I just think that this round mile will suit him. You know, I think he's, for, for a horse with his physique, you know, for him to have been doing what he was doing at the likes of Goodwood you know, and around a tight bend at Keeneland, you know, I think it says a lot about how much talent there is in there. So round mile, that's good. Stiff finish, suit him really well. Difficult race. I'm finding it a difficult race to be bullish about now, but Battleground will be pretty high up on the list. OK. The other thing I'm reliably informed... Um 
is that Battleground only turned three on the 10th of May. So it was still a two-year when he ran at Newmarket. And he's only run once this season. Yeah, he's only had the one run. Yeah. Um, you know, the... Cool more, I've just said that. No, Kevin Buckley's just messaged that. It's good to... Firstly, it's good to know that the, the cool more British representative is watching this show online right now. Watching. Boom, boom, Buckley. As he's Nothing gets past known. Buckley. Yeah. Personally, I've always thought Coolmore are fantastic. What about you, Kev? Yeah, can, can, you, can you feel the pressure now, man? <laughs> no, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Buckley. Oh, he's such a good operator. Um, I'll tell you what, one more I will quickly mention, Matt, um, is Lucky Vega. Um, because this is go it hasn't been widely publicised, but this is going to be his last race ever. And he's, after this, he's going to go down to Australia to, to stand there in a couple of months. So th this is it for him. You know, and I, I think he's been going very well since, since the Irish Guineas. He's shaped very well there. He's shaped very well in new markets. And uh, this, this is it for him. If, if it doesn't click here, he doesn't get another chance. So um, he's interesting, definitely. And, and Shane Foley, I remember um, Johnny Murta said he caught up with him and, and he really felt that he didn't quite get a clear cut at the... The, the, the front two, if you like, up at Newmarket. Yeah, for sure. Like, look, his form lays in against all of them, really. You know, he ties in with all the, with all the leading two-year-olds from last year. The three-year-old form, like you say, right on Poetic Flair's girth uh, at Newmarket. So he has to be strongly considered, I think. Ascot should suit him well. And we'll have a look at that that French run um, of Poetic Flair because... He ran much the, better the, shot than the, it looks. The, yeah. No, 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 no. no. In a pocket. He, was up, he was up with the pace. Then when they quickened, he got hopelessly outpaced. But at the end, he would have been third in another few strides. I mean, so it look at here, it looks like he's dropping through the telly like a knife through, like a stone through water. But you watch in the final 50 yards, he is absolutely flying. I mean, he's charging it. He'd be third in another, he'd be second in another few yards. And of course, the form being given a boost again. And I think he should have won in Ireland. I you really thought, do. What, you, why do you think he should have won? I just think he, he, he hung slightly left across the track. Yeah. And it was a minute winning distance. I think if he'd kept a straight line, he'd have beaten Max Sweeney. What do you think? Would you worry just would you worry just how busy he's been? Look, I know I know Jim's horses can can put down a serious amount of work and keep firing, but you know that that ground at the Curra was bad, and that was his fourth run in, in like five and a half six weeks. You know he's travelling over again to to Ascot. You know I wouldn't be surprised if he's tough enough, but it's a fair test of his toughness now. But isn't that slightly going on the basis that just tradition is the right way to train a horse? I mean, like, uh, how does anyone know? I mean, like, why can't he run? I mean, why can't a horse run? He, he's not running that far. Nah, look, I mean, he can run, but can he produce a peak performance is the question when he's taking on horses that, you know, by and large have been a bit more kind of, I suppose, target trained, whereas Jim's taken in all the classics along the way. You know, it's this, it, it, it would be, look, maybe you're, you could be right. Maybe it won't matter. Maybe he'll be harder fit than the rest and not to make the difference, but... I suppose we're, we're conditioned to think that um, target training is the way to go and giving them the few weeks between their runs, etc. So um, it, it'll be a triumph for the, the traditionalists, if you will, if Poetic Flair can, uh, can back up again and win here. Now, we can have a look at Muster Duff. Beat the old Kevin Blake horse, didn't it? Ego trip in second at Newcastle on the first, on the debut. <laughs> um, absolutely hosed Cheers. in. Um, <laughs> but this is, of course, a Shabwell horse uh, trained by John and Thady Gosden. Unbeaten in three. It wouldn't be totally impossible, Kevin, that this is a type of horse who could come here and just be better than those that have been running in guineas. Um, well, I'm looking forward to hearing what Jason has to say about him now, because I know Jason will always have his ear to the ground in Newmarket. Like, I, I don't think this horse isn't, should be the type of price he is based on his form. Like, I, he won a listed race last time, and I, I thought he was workmanlike enough. And there was a lot of money for him during the week, and... You just you, you often get these horses at Ascot that they're just they're very heavily backed because they're absolutely flying more so than what's in the form book and, and I'm, I'm guessing he's one of those. Yeah, it's all about potential as far as he is concerned. The horse that he beat in the third, Bull Ace, had, had come out and won pretty impressively, but in a little handicap off a mark of 84 at Newmarket. So it is all about potential as far as he is concerned. He's, he's not done anything for me like what a, a battleground. Um, I have to say, if you were to look back at the 2000 guineas at Newmarket, the only one who really 
got completely lost going into the dip was Chindit. And he was making ground hand over fist late in the day. They've kept him back for this. They think that Ascot is definitely going to suit him a little bit better, quicker conditions. He's a big player, Chindit. I think he is. I really do. Pat Dobbs looking forward to it. On his new market run, you're, I think 99 out of 100 race readers would say go up to a mile and a quarter. But I think they just think perhaps this will... This track will just suit him better. That, that you know, he, he didn't run well in the Dewhurst either. And maybe Newmarket's not his place. But he was doing in the 2000 Guineas at Newmarket what Poetic Flair was doing in the French Guineas at the end. He was really beginning to get going. Um, and it's not impossible at all. Hannon seems bullish. Big chance. Yeah, yeah, I think I think he's uh, I think I think he's um, one who's just sort of skimming underneath the surface at the moment, and um, he looked he looked like a horse who just does enough most of the time when we've seen him out there. Of course, his pedigree makes him sort of very attractive further down the line. Um, he's a he's a fascinating contender. I just feel mm -hmm. um, and you, you, look when when they've run as bad as they have, but having won at Ascot under softer conditions, Battleground is just too big a price for me. I, I think, look, when people will say, oh, he's, he's Warfront, um, you know, and th th they don't put it in. He's out of a superstar mare. Um, and I think that um, he, he, bar one bad run, he hasn't let you down so far. If I was Aidan O'Brien, though, and Kevin Buckley has kind of put me onto this by the age thing, yep. I'd be working back from the Breeders' Cup mile for Battleground. Because you know he runs well in America. He did so last year. Um, slam him on the Lasix. He'll be just a bit older, obviously, by November. So if I was Aiden O'Brien, I'd be thinking, right, battleground. I want him in the Breeders' Cup mile and be working. I'm, I'm almost thinking maybe forget about the first half of the season for him. Mm, but anyway, which it's is, just, he's is, a big boy. But listen, he, went, he, went, off, boy. he went off nine to two favourite for the, the yeah, 2000. Went, no, listen, Dutori was caught out on a wing and he just, he just let him come out. Look, they were all on the majority weren't running great at that time. Kevin, at the moment, the Irish haven't done much at Royal Ascot 2021. Will they do anything here? I think they have a good hand. Which one is the one? Uh, I'll go with Battleground, but Lucky Vega would be a close second. Properly wide open now. There's not too many results that would surprise me here. OK, well, that's clear. Thank you for that, Kip. Um, right, Royal Ascot tickets on Saturday, Shark. Up for grabs. Two pairs. Two pairs. <laughs> Two pairs. Robert, Robert if you want to get your hands on these, you comment, win. For chance to win the pair of the tickets, you do that on your YouTube. Anywhere you can leave a message with the word win, leave it, and you could be going to Royal Ascot on the Saturday. Obviously got to do... They'd, your... they'd, they'd be like gold dust, wouldn't they? Well... Yes. Relatively. <laughs> yeah. Got to get you... Just agree with Kevin for yeah, once, Yeah, no, that'd be you? like gold dust, yeah. <laughs> Try to, try to build up the prize, Matt. Get people excited. Play yeah. the game. <laughs> they are the hottest ticket. They're hotter than any tickets for Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals at the moment. They are the hottest tickets out there. Let's there go to the go. Prince of Wales' stakes, where, again, <laughs> Ireland really can't be seen. Um, Lord North is the favourite at 9-4. to four. Love is also towards the top <laughs> of the market. But you've got to think Love will be... I think Love will be held back for the, the Tats Gold Cup, something like that. Um, a race similar to that. Pretty Polly, maybe. Um, yeah, well, we're seeing as the Tats Gold Cup took place two weeks ago. I hope she's not that, waiting for that. That's why I changed my <laughs> mind to the Pretty Polly, you absolute numpty. Armoury at sixes. Adib, of course, is not going to get the ground, so that won't run. Japan, I'm afraid, is just not as good as Ryan Moore hopes. He's, he loves Redeb. Or Daria's fascinating. Could run first time out. James Fanshawe still in the deciding stage there. Mogul was horrible at Epsom. Uh, My Oberon at 14. Uh, Broom, um, 16. And St. Gareth's 20. The more you look at this, the more that this looks winnable to me, Shark. Absolutely. Um, you know, Lord North, um, we have all... He sort of jumped onto our screens, if you like, when he managed to to win at this particular meeting. Um, you know, he, the, the, the bloodless victory over a Dave um, was the one that made us all stand up and realise how good he was in this particular contest. Just look at this for a, a change of gear uh, late in the day. And James Doyle gave him an absolute peach, but it's that change of gear that he holds, isn't it? That's, that's absolute key with him. 
And since this, um, he has been sort of fairly sparsely campaigned. The run over in America behind Tanawa was very good. And then the Maidan return, that was when John and Thady Gosden just cemented their partnership training, if you like, the father and son combo. They had, what was it, Mishrif also won. They had Hakiki in the, in the uh, Lincoln at Doncaster. He's rock solid. He yeah. is absolutely rock solid. I mean, he does look quite good, Kevin. Having said that, I would try and take him on if I could. And we're having him again in, in Maidan, and he showed that turn of foot against good horses. He, he clearly is a, a powerful beast. Speaking of powerful beasts, I'm hoping Armory runs because I thought he was really impressive at Chester. I thought he, he came forward once again at Chester Armory. Yeah, I think the situation with the Bally Doyle ones is, and uh, look, reading between the lines, I I'd be surprised if Love turned up here. They haven't made a decision yet, but it looks like she might wait for the pretty Polly. Um, hold your bets there until we get some confirmation. Yeah. But exactly. Uh, but Armory, I'd agree with you, Matt. I thought he was very impressive at Chester. Um, you know, he progressed quite nicely last season, nearly won a Cox Plate. Um, and look, the, the thing about this race, Matt, I, I think this is going to chop up into a pretty small field. Uh, and you want horses with pace that can settle. And he did just that here at Chester. Small field, relaxed out the back. Uh, and look at the turn of foot he showed when, when Ryan asked him to go, to go through the gears. Um, he'll have a, a stronger class of competition at Royal Ascot. But I think fast ground there, 10 furlongs, suit him really well. And the type of race this might well turn out to be, I think it could suit him very well. It's worth pointing out St. Garris has been beaten again since. So the actual form is probably not as strong as you might have hoped. But, Jason, impressions are big things, and that horse just looked like it was a real uh, look, look, when, machine. When, when you look through them, you know, um, you've got Lord North, he's 1-2-3, one, Armoury's one twenty. Um, You know, the filly who we, we mentioned, uh, the Breeders' Cup winner, is Daria. hopefully going to have her return to action. Um, you know, she, she's managed to win a, a couple of Group 1s against her own sex. It'll be interesting if she goes back in here. She's worthy of her place. And with the filly's allowance and where she is from a ratings perspective, You've got, you've got to give her a squeak. Yeah, they booked William Buick to ride Ordaria in the Prince of Wales's, and she's even better at 14 to 1 at the moment. If, if she was there on the day, it's one of those, isn't she? She would not be 14 to 1 on the day Absolutely if she's there. No way. No way. But. I did, this could be five or six runners. Thanks, Kev. Um, just out of interest, Kev, because um, you got married in lockdown, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, lockdown marriage, the way forward. Are you still married? <laughs> Yeah, as far as I know, hope so. OK. No, it's only because <laughs> Paul Tyson on, um, on the uh, Facebook page just says, my friend Karen Maloney fancies Kevin. Like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> evening with you, it feel like there was no tomorrow. But as anyway, Ke as Kevin imagine, would yeah. normally reply, she's only human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, maybe just send a picture in just in case. Um, but um, he is happily married at the moment, but it's worth taking a look, Kev, you never know. Um, so... Prince of Wales' stakes. With absolutely so many question marks about who is going to turn up and everything, but um, given that it may well chop up into a small field, Lord North the will, be, will be too quick for these. Right. And I am fascinated to see um, James Fanshawe turn up here, William Buick book to ride the filly. Yeah, if I was having a bet today, I might just take a chance on Ordaria. But I would be with Armory um, on the day. And you know when he ran at Chester... This will be a, this is a surprising stat, Kev, but because one of us has done some research here, I can tell you this. That was the first ever time he'd ever run in the UK armory. Yeah, I think that would have come as a surprise to most people, I suppose, Matt. Yeah, you're, you're putting them out tonight now, in fairness to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't think it's going to help us back go. any winners, but it's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all about just... just uh, someone has to do some work. You two just fly <laughs> it, walk in here, think you can get away with it. Take, take the mick a couple of times. But for those of us who do put a shift in, um, Armory, yeah, second run in Britain. I'm hoping it'll be the Prince of Wales's. Nothing suggesting it won't be. I think he's going to take the world of beating Armory. I think he'll win that. I think he's a good horse. Right. I agree. Uh, Kev, we need a selection, though, from you. Yep, Armory will do for me, Matthew. Follow me in. Well done. Inspiring stuff. Uh, that is Kevin Bate, then, who's following me in with Armory in the Prince of Wales. It's like Cheltenham all over again. Uh, right, we are going to move on to the Ascot Gold Cup. Gold Cup's, of course, something that Ireland do quite well in um, 
Except, of course, the one at Punchestown. Uh, right. Uh, Stradivarius. He's won it a few times. He's not bad round Ascot, even money. Subjectivist will be a big fancy for some, but a big price at six and a half. Trushan in the mud would be fascinating. And he's not useless, even when there's not mud. Seven. Santiago. Got a question whether he's quite up to this for me. 14. Search for a song I don't think's impossible each way at 14. Baron Samady at 16. Tiger Moff at 16. And 20 to 1. Must give Princess Zoe a mention, of course, for the great Mullins. Um, let's start with you, Shark. You are an Ascot Gold Cup winning jockey, of course. You are multiple Group 1 winning jockey at the Royal Meeting. One of the great St James's Palace Stakes rides, of course, you gave um, there. Um, if you could ride one in this, you'd be hard pushed not to pick oh, the favourite. Oh, yeah, you'd be you? hard pushed to, to, to get away from um, Stradivarius. Interestingly, that they took him for um, a gallop just down the road. They took him to the July course because, you know, sometimes he can get a little bit lackadaisical um, in his work. Um, he's, a, he's a stayer, blessed with a fantastic change of gear. That is absolutely key, isn't it? But... Um, if, if you're looking at horses around him, you know, we've got a horse who was um, second in a Melbourne Cup. We've got um, Subjectivist, who's arguably offed off his best ever performance when he absolutely destroyed the field last time. Um, it's, it, it, where did this come from? We, we knew that he was pretty good, but all of a sudden he took a massive leap forward here in Dubai. Am I crazy, Jason, to suggest that these Dubai staying races are a little bit of a law unto themselves. And I'm not sure the form well, translates it, across here. But, but as far as he is concerned, he, he put up a performance six pounds better than he had done um, with anything before. So, um, you know, he's got to be on the premises. I'm interested to know what Kevin Blake thinks of Stradivarius because, of course, Stradivarius is seven. Now, we already know <laughs> Batash cannot win the King's Stand Stakes because he's too old at seven. And Stradivarius bid in to, to get on the score sheet fourth time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Just think of all the miles he's gone compared to Batash. I mean, he must be clapped out, mustn't he, Kev? Well, Matt, there was a horse called Yates a few years ago. You might not remember him, and he did all right when he was an old boy. So. <laughs> no, but you've said the old boy. But I never said Yates couldn't win. You've said these old boys are too old. Well, uh, I don't think Stradivarius had a fracture over the winter, but um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know more than me on that one. But this is uh, true. Uh, look, I, I've been trying to, um, I've <laughs> been trying to get Stradivarius beaten the Gold Cup for a couple of years now. I thought last might be the time to get him beaten and tough ground, and look what he did. He was absolutely brilliant, and um, he's just really well equipped for a good, for a, for a Gold Cup. You know, he, he's got that turn of foot that most stayers don't have. He's got tactical speed to get himself out of trouble. You know, I, I was perfectly happy with it with his comeback at Ascot. Um, and look, he, he's going to take all the whack. And again, it's, if you want to get involved, even money. Um, if you'd like to, by all means, I'd rather go fishing for one bigger price and um, each way. And sure, look, if he fit the second to Stradivarius, so be it. If he beats him, you've had a beat. Uh, and the one I'd like is that he wasn't even in the betting there. Um, but uh, I'm, uh, he's an intended runner, and that's him of the sun. Um, trained by Donica O'Brien and he's been sort of a, a subtle improver there for the last year or so and he absolutely whacked um, Search for a Song and Twilight Payment at Leopardstown last time look his stamina will be unknown he hasn't raced beyond a mile six but he love fast ground he's a particularly good moving horse he gives the impression of one that, that will stay, certainly stay two miles after two and a half we'll have to wait and see but he's definitely interesting at a price OK, Kev. Apologies, Kevin. Emperor, just... He's talking about Emperor of the Sun. Yeah, there. Emperor of the just, Sun, just... who is trained, yeah. of course, by Donica yep. O'Brien, um, by Galileo, out of a doubt's choice mare, um, has never gone further than a mile and six, but ran against Search for a Song last time at Leopardstown and beat that horse convincingly at a big price, but was only rated 104 there, has got £20 to find, roughly, with Stradivarius. Yeah, yeah, but when you... When you go up, now. When you go up to an extreme trip, um, like the Gold Cup, it's all about... No, no, your, your mental attitude, how you switch off and find that rhythm. You know, there are very few horses that can go around here, sort of... Um, uh, 
just leaning on their rider or giving them a hard time on the way around. You've got to find that perfect rhythm. And when push comes to shove up around the home turn, that's where Stradivarius comes into his own, isn't it? You know, that's where he possesses that change of gear. Lots of them, Emperor of the Sun, Tiger Moth, all these sorts of horses, subjectivists, they're going into that unknown territory. And we, we just don't know. But you keep looking at it and going around. It has got an each-way look about the race, though, Kevin, most definitely, you know, because, again, a lot of people, like a Palace Pier, they may well go, oh, John Gosden will definitely win with Palace Pier. Stradivarius will de definitely win. And, of course, with John and Thady Gosden, a little bit quiet at the Oaks and the Derby and a few meetings have gone by, but they just have been light in that division. A spectacular start to the season, and then they, will come, no three -olds, they? they, they will come strong again now. They didn't have any two-year-olds, and they've got no three-year-olds. Basically. But, but if, as John said, if you go searching for those Royal Ascot juveniles and start pushing buttons, you haven't got them. You know, they, they either show themselves early or they don't. Yeah. Although they used to have those kind of horses. Do you, is Rosewell going to ride, run, search for a song, Kev, do you think? I can't say I've heard. I can't say I've heard. Um, wouldn't be a surprise. I'd be worried about her settling. You know, she can be quite a strong filly. You know, she famously ran away with Chris Hayes pretty much in Naira St. Ledger and still managed to win. So getting her settled now would, would be a tough task, I'd say, in a Gold Cup. But um, it wouldn't be a surprise if she ran now. I think Ocean Wind might have a little each way squeak at a big price, but essentially, I think Kevin hit the nail Ocean on the... Ocean Wind doesn't go, does he? I think he was... He won't go, will it? I don't think he's going to go. OK, well, essentially, Stradivarius, just that turn of speed, yeah. If you go hard, well, he's suited. It, if you go it, slowly, it, he's suited. He's just... The, there's not really a way of getting him beat. Spanish Mission has taken his form forward, hasn't he? You know, since he's gone to, to Andrew Balding, you know, not to be under... But we're all looking. We're scratching around, trying to find something to mm. hit the board at a bit of a price, because we all think Stradivarius will win. Twilight Payment, of course, will, will go probably, won't he, Kev? Yeah, he'll run. He'll run. But he won't um, win. Yeah, two, two and a half will be a question mark, but um, he'll run and he'll rattle off the ground, so fingers crossed. Eva Money Stradivarius. The problem is, when he wins by six, it will look like a big price, Eva Money, but it looks short anti-post. And I don't think he's going to get that much shorter in, in the days to come. So maybe it's one to wait till at least the 48-hour deck stage and see what else is around. That is the Asker Gold Cup, Commonwealth Cup, completely different end of the spectrum, a lightly raced uh, youngster sprinters, of course, they used to go in the King Stand and the Diamond Jubilee. Now they clump together with what hopefully will prove an easy opportunity. Campanelle was a very good two-year-old. Supremacy, of course, was a fabulous two-year-old. Run a hopeless race on comeback. Dragon Symbol looks progressive. Measure of Magic at 10. Battleground unlikely. Dandala at 12. Diligent Harry could go for Clive Cox, as well as, of course, as uh, Supremacy. Dillijan Harry was brilliant on the all-weather, 12-1. to 1. Memento keeps improving at 14. And uh, Sueza looks a massive price for the Commonwealth Cup. I'd be amazed if you get 14. I thought it was about 5-1, to 1, Sueza. But anyway, um, if you can get 14, Sueza, take that. Get on. Yeah. Yeah. But on the basis, it's more I, like... I, I don't think you will. <laughs> yeah, on the basis, it's about 5-1. to 1. Don't back it. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's start with you, Kevin. Uh, I, I find the Commonwealth Cup a very hard race to sort out um, on the day, let alone anti-post. Anything catch your eye? Yeah, it's very tough, Matt. Look, look Campanelle was very good at the meeting last year. I'd say six furlongs w will be her trip, but, you know, you, you're taking a fair bit on trust now. First run as a three-year-old, um, being targeted at the race. But, you know, Supremacy, this is her winning at the meeting last year, the over five. And in fairness, she, she wasn't the typical Wes Ward two-year-old in that it wasn't like she kind of the race wrapped up with, with early speed. You know, she it took her a while to get on top. And I'd say the extra furlong, it will certainly suit her. It did in the morning, didn't seem to get the mile at the Breeders' Cup. So, yeah, I can, I can see the case with her. Supremacy, I, I love last year, but geez, he was disappointed on his comeback. Really disappointing. So he's got a long way to come back to winning something like this. And and, and the French horse, the French filly, you know, the ground is, is a massive unknown, isn't it? Sueza, you know, never running anything like it. it's going to be next week. So, so that's a concern. I, yeah. I found myself... I'm struggling a bit, Matt. The only thing with the French filly is the trainer has stated, Sharp, that he thinks 
Swayze needs better ground. And yeah, he... Or good ground will be OK. Yeah. yeah, so that might help. Supremacy. Now, I was working for Sky Sports Racing when Supremacy ran, and Clive said beforehand that I don't think he was expecting much, and he said that the horse had worked really badly as a two-year-old first time and didn't run very well. And he, he wasn't really expecting much. I suspect Supremacy will run miles better. He was 10 to 11 favourite, he was wasn't terrible. he? And, and that, that three-year-old sprint division was looking for that next superstar. Um, thankfully, Dragon Symbol has stepped into the, the plate there, if you like. But I, I know that Adam Kirby was... Abs chin was on the floor after he got beat. And it, he was beaten a long way from home. He's got to be much better than that. You talk about his form towards the back end. It all ties in with Lucky Vega. Admittedly, he's gone and proven himself up, at, you know, with the best of the, the classic generation over a mile, if you like. So, you know, the form, the, the, the form is better than he has shown so far. Rohan has come out and managed to win and beat Dragon Symbol absolutely on a head bob when they met um, up at Haydock last time. So... I do think that Supremacy, we have to give him another roll of the dice. Surely that's not as good as he is. And what about Campanelle? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about short price favourites in Batash, Palace, Pierce, Stradivarius. If you go on the basis Campanelle was the Morney winner and looked like a monster when beating Nando Parado, then ran over a mile in the Breeders' Cup, but far from disgrace behind I, Aunt Pearl, couldn't... Just Campanelle be easily and, the best of these. And, of course, she could be absolute the best. And this is a pointer. This is a pointer to, hopefully, they're going to go straight on to the July Cup, aren't they? The only Group 1 in the calendar that Dittori is yet to win. And, could you know, he's finished second on a couple of occasions. But that's the one that he is desperate to win. Obviously, got to get Royal Ascot out of the way first. Have you seen some of the pictures of her coming back in after galloping and all that? I mean, she looks like an absolute giant coming back in now. She wasn't or didn't strike me as being overly big. She was solid, compact last year, but she's really filled out her frame. And the other one I was just going to mention, I don't know whether it's going to run. It may not even be in the race anymore, but Sacred was good in the trial first time. Didn't run very well in the guineas. Yeah. Um, but back at six furlongs, I don't think Sacred's without... If it ran, I just don't know. I have she's no idea. A, she's a 20 to one shot. She's been left in anyway. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, of course, her, all her two-year-old form was down over the minimum when she was wanting or looking like she wanted a little bit further, five and six furlongs anyway, and then she stepped up. Um, the mile obviously proving too far for her. Dan Dalla, um, her absolute best performance. Um, she was probably the most impressive of all the, 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 the victors at Royal Ascot last year. Kevin Blake's in charge of the race planning at Aiden, at uh, Joseph's, isn't he? So... Any chance Thunder Moon would be supplemented for this, Kev? No, zero. <laughs> right. Okay, that rules that out then. One of Thunder Moon would be would have been of interest for me in this. Much more interesting. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see what you're saying. It, it, it wouldn't be a million to one that he could end up trying to be shorter at some stage, but um, not the, not next week. No. And of course, it was real. Um, it was really, really soft up at Haydock in the Sandy Lane. Method. He came back. Um, you know, it's not beyond the realms that we we have seen the. Um, we haven't seen the best of him yet. Um, and, of course, his two-year-old form was rock solid. OK. But look, if you, if you wanted a sneaky one, slightly sneaky one, uh, for Johnny Murta, Measure of Magic, um, she's won her last two. And she, she actually beat Logo Hunter on her penultimate start. And he's won his two since. He won again today. He looks one of the best sprinters in Ireland. Uh, a Measure of Magic beat him snug enough and came out and won well the last day. Stiff six would be a slight question mark, but she is an intended runner, as far as I know. So she's potentially interesting. OK, well, give us a selection then, Kev. Uh, it'd be a token one. I'd probably give you a measure of magic at the price, but it's, it's, it's not a race I'd be at all bullish about now. Campanelle is the one I'd like at the top of the market, but, it, geez, it's a tough race now. OK, shock? I think Supremacy is the, is the absolute forgotten horse off the back of one run, isn't he? You know, um, and uh, it, again, it's taken a little bit of a leap to hope that he can bounce back. Uh, method against some real race fit runners up at um, Haydock. That wasn't a bad run. That wasn't a bad run coming back in. Yeah, I take a look at Sacred if she happened to turn up or... If she didn't, then I think the favourite Campanelle will run well at biggish odds, effectively. Um, Coronation Stakes, 
Uh, we could have an Irish 1,000 guineas winner in here, Empress Josephine, or we could have the 1,000 guineas win here, uh, Mother Earth. Um, of the others, pretty gorgeous. Uh, Joan of Arc is in there. Um, lots of others. Snow Lantern could easily bounce back after... Um, well, she's miles better than we saw at York, I suspect. Alcohol-free. I would imagine Ashley Murphy will be very excited to get back on her round of bend. Um, let's start with you, Kev, because we're not absolutely sure who's going to turn up here. Um, Empress Josephine would have to be supplemented. What, what's, how do you gauge this? What do you think is going to happen from the Irish point of view? Look, from what Aidan has said so far, it looks like the two big ones could run, Mother Earth, and, and like you say, um, Empress Josephine could come in as well. He seems to have given that indication in recent days. Um, which would make it pretty spicy in the front end. Um, Joseph's going to run pretty gorgeous. That, that's the intention at the minute. Um, you know, would, rattling fast ground would be a question mark. Um, look, everyone knows at this stage her, her two-year-old form is right up there with the best of all the Felix around. Um, and, you know, she was a small bit disappointing on her return in the 1,000 guineas, but, but off the back of an interrupted prep, you know, didn't get a, a favourable run of it, really. She was strong on the wing. I was, you know, just took a while to get in. Ground was very bad. I wouldn't like to judge her too harshly on it. And uh, she's entitled to tighten up a bit from that run. And uh, Ascot will suit her really well. I just personally, I just, I just, you'd be a little bit worried if it's rafting fast, which it probably will be. But she had that absolute top draw juvenile form, didn't we? Yeah, I and mean, look, I know you could say, oh, she was going up against Shale, but they're two-year-olds. And I know what you were saying about the cow and the rabbit and all that and everything, but they're three-year-olds <laughs> now. Um, and Pretty Gorgeous was always the type who was going to be a better three-year-old. Yeah, oh, she's a big girl. Yeah, and she's, I saw her the day at the Guineas now. She looked fantastic. And it was one of those that you know, Joseph got her as fit as he could without a run, but... You know, looking at her in the in the in the ring that day, you'd say, "Okay, you're you're going to tighten a little bit from this," uh, and I'd say she will. You know, it's just you should you, as much as you look at her and say you're surely going to be at least as good, if not better, as a three year old. You know, they have to go and do it. You know, you can't lean on that two year old form forever. So hopefully, she'll get back to her best here, and if she does, she's going to be banging the mix. And you, you remember York, um, you know, Primo Baccio just, just exploded out of nowhere. That was one of the most impressive change of gear. You know, when you talk about an absolute uh, specialist, Myla, um, I know that she's going to be going um, Ascot from York, but that change of gear from the back of the pack to put that race to bed in no time was, was very much... The, the, the change of gear of a Group 1 performer. Yeah, she looked good. Belosa wouldn't be out of the mix in here, but she's likely to go, I think, Jersey, possibly. And Snow Lantern, um, that oh, poor she's, run she's, behind... You don't give up on her. No, no, no. So, so the poor run at York, the, the reports were that she literally latched onto the bridle and for three, three and a half furlongs didn't breathe at all. Um, you know, so... I'm sure that they've got some, some different um, type of gadget that they're going to try and help her with, you know, to try and get her to breathe. She's been to Newbury for a race course gallop. They all went there and everything seemed to go well and she relaxed into a rhythm. Obviously, it's a big difference when you, you go out there under race conditions, but they know that she's better and that Richard Hannon has said he can't believe she finished as close up as she did when she hasn't taken a breath for just about half of that contest. What do you think about alcohol? Yeah, Jay, here's one for you, Jason. Yeah. If yeah. You know, sorry, sorry, Matt. That's all right. If you yeah. own Snow Lantern, I know we're, you, you, certain people are, are kind of sneakier than others. The handicapper's given her a mark of 97. Would you be anyway tempted to run in the Sandringham? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But, of course, they'd be thinking they're coming back here. That's a very good shout indeed. But, no, she, she'll be up at the top level. Yeah, you'd, ima you'd imagine so, but you should need to settle. Because yeah, oh, that wasn't yeah. her first. That wasn't her first time to do that. Now, like I was looking at her second run when she won the the maiden, and I'm thinking, God, you you'd be well able to come back to seven furlongs if if they wanted you to. And the jersey would be an interesting option, but yeah, full of options. So it'd be interesting to see what they do. And alcohol free, I wouldn't give up on a tool shock. I, I mean, the more you watch that Guineas run, on a wing and a prayer out wide, hung away from the pack, but kept on at the finish. 
Um, maybe she will be better. Two lengths behind Mother Earth, right? Yeah. And let's not forget. Not much to make up. Let's not forget how good Detroit is. Lots of people talk about different tracks, and we know that he's brilliant all over, and it's muscle memory, and you've been in that situation, and he's ridden 73 Royal Ascot winners or whatever. Everybody underestimates how good he is at Newmarket, right? Once it's two and three quarters from the bushes once you get going. He was spectacular on Mother Earth to get her rolling down the outside and get away from. You know, people forget what sort of machinery you're sitting on, especially when you ride Nadens as well. But De Tori was absolutely brilliant at Newmarket on her. Well, strangely enough, after the 2000 Guineas, everyone was saying Master of the Seas was at a disadvantage on the far side on his own. And then 24 hours later, it's, 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 Mother it's, Earth did exactly it's what Master of the Seas did. How to ride that dip. You can't canter down to the bottom of the dip and expect to go. The only horse, I think, who's come down there uh, and on the bridle and basically gone up the hill the other side would have been Zephonic, you know, or one of those that, that was an absolute freak in that generation. But De Tori had his best. Yeah, Bijou Dand, one of those freaks. Mm. St. James's Palace Stakes winner under yeah. Weaver. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely making Canaan look weak in a finish. You did. It was, no, but I'll take no credit for it because Mick Canaan was at his absolute best at that moment. He was. Anyway, moving on. But he looked weak. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, though. That, that, that actually, when you look at it, could be one of the races of the meeting. If Empress Josephine, Mother Earth... Maybe Pre pretty gorgeous. Primo Baccio. Snow Lantern, Belossa, Primo Baccio, alcohol-free, turned up. It's an absolute cracker. It it's is. a cracker. It is. It's a tacker. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cracker. <laughs> right. And let's have a look at the Diamond Jubilee. Ashi Murphy will be on the market leader here, probably, um, in Starman, who's 11 to 4. Dream of Dreams, of course, Ashin used to ride that. So Michael Stout, very solid at this kind of level. 9 to 2, Nahar at 7, Glass Slippers 10, K Byron at 12, Art Power at 12, Going Commando at 14, The Glen Shield at 14, Sonela at 16, and came from the dark at 16 to 1. Kevin, I don't know what you think, but what, what this, this division is absolutely up for grabs. Yeah, big time, big time. You'd love to see a few foreigners come over and have a crack, maybe from Australia. They always go on about their brilliant sprinters there. We haven't seen one for a while. Um, they would have had a mighty chance, you'd think. Um, she looked the star man. The hair form lo looks pretty hot, doesn't it? And there wasn't much between them. I thought Nahar, on another day, might, might have won that race. Uh, and he's a horse I like, and you'd think given what he did in the Air Gold Cup and how he seemed suited by those big fields, strongly run races last season, maybe a Diamond Jubilee might suit him a little bit better than, uh, than the Juki York panned out. So while I'd respect Starman and, and a return to faster ground will probably suit him very well, at the prices, uh, I wouldn't like to give up on the heart. Hey, and Nahar, Kevin, I, I was going through his form um, and he sometimes has got himself a little bit out of contention and then really powered home. I'm not saying that, you know, he was given too much to do at York, but just on that track, it may well have caught him out a little bit uh, mm. against a more naturally speedier type. And I'm not saying he's ungenuine. But he'd be the perfect type of horse who'd benefit from a set of cheek pieces or something like that, wouldn't he? Just to get him into the race early. Yeah, it wouldn't knock it at all. I looked at the faster they go in front of him, the better you you want them coming back to him and him quickening up in against them, you know? And you'd like to hope they'll go a proper gallop in this race. But, yeah, he's, there's a lot of talent in there, so there's no doubt about that. And Dream of Dreams, Matt, you were mentioning. Um, I don't know who is going to get the, the leg up. You seem to think that Oshin will go... Um, oh, Oshin will be on Starman. Rama will be on, will be on Dream of Dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, um, Dream of Dreams has got fantastic form here. And this suits him, doesn't it? You know, he, he didn't have to be at his best to win at Windsor when we were there the other day on his return. But he, he, he got it done. Um, and he's the type who will be flashing home late. I kind of think, though, he's a, without being rude to him, he's a pick-up pieces group one sprinter in that he's not really a worldie, but he can pick up pieces when there isn't something in there that should be a worldie. Do you, do you see what I'm saying, Kevin? Is like he's, he's, he's not like an Ashdow or one of those stout green desert or something like that. He's a, for me, he's an absolutely solid group two sprinter that can win a group one, as he has done. 
when there isn't something really good in the field? I don't know. I'm maybe um, one big I don't know. No, I, I, big call him a group, I, I call him a group one sprinter, but he's not a tip-top one, if you know what I mean. And the tip-top ones only come along every so often. But I don't think he'd, you'd need to be a tip-topper to, to win this, I don't think. You know, Starman obviously hasn't had a huge amount of racing and has already got to a very high level. So if there is a tip-topper, it's most likely him. But, you know, he, ha he has to go and do it. And um, if he doesn't come up to that mark, the likes of Dream of Dreams will be there snapping at his heels. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you, you've got Starman's rated, uh, what is it? Is he 113, I think? Um, and then you've 16 got... 16 now, yeah. 16, he's been put up 16. But he's still still a few pounds to find with um, with, with, with a Dream of Dreams on, on official ratings. Kate Byron, um, I don't know how much you read into him winning a, a conditions race, managing to beat um, Brando, who seems to have been around forever, but he's, he's not a bad stick on a going day. He's, he's all right. I, I mean, I'd be disappointed if he won, put it like that. I really would. I don't think it's a great race if he wins it, but it might not be a, a, a great race. The problem, surely, with Dream of Dreams, Kevin, is that he's seven. Oh, yeah, these seven-year-olds really struggle, Matt. Has he had any surgeries? <laughs> Has he had any fractures? <laughs> yeah, that statistic's really going to come back to haunt you, I think, throughout the week. You've, to have ruled out seven-year-olds at Royal Ascot 2021 has meant that you've had to rule out Stradivarius, now Dream of Dreams, Batash. It's a long list of absolute top-notchers that you don't fancy at all because they're seven. Time will tell, time will tell. <laughs> yes, it will. Yes, it will. Right, let's get a selection then from our experts, uh, inverted commas. Uh, Jason? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go stick with Dream of Dreams. Um, you know, I think that he was arguably a little bit unlucky when, when he just failed in this before. And um, with a race run to suit Ryan Moore on board, he doesn't make too many mistakes. I'll have him on my side. Kevin the Blake? I'll take my chance with Nahar at the prices. I think he'll, uh, he'll have a good, right good crack at reversing that form with Starman, hopefully. OK. I don't think it's impossible that Ed Walker might win this, but not with Starman. If Came From The Dark ran in this, I think this is a sprinter bubbling under. Very unlucky not to win no. a new market. No. What? You know, I tell you, I, w I would have fancied him in the King Stand. I couldn't believe he wasn't entered in the King Stand. I would have definitely fancied him. With all that pace that's there... I thought he would have had a right chance, yeah. but they, they haven't entered him and they put him in here, so that, that was slightly surprising to me. So you're saying Ed Walker's made a mistake here, yeah? I'm got saying this he surprised wrong. me. Well, has he got <laughs> it wrong or right? Well, yeah, I suppose we'll find out in about uh, what, uh, 10 days' time. I think came from the dark. He's not without a little squeak here each way at a big price because I think it's open. I mean, Starman looked good, but you're just yeah, judging yeah. him on one run. Yeah, we, we are judging him. Well, no, we're not. He, he quickly went through the grades, didn't he, last term? And, um, you know, the fact that he was he was sharp enough to win first up, um, obviously, they, they were talking, all the talk was on the track, wasn't it, that um, the switch in jockeys, obviously, because Tom Marquand had been riding him as he'd been going through the grades, but he will be claimed to ride in a half. Yeah, in a half. Summer Gam will be another with a bit of an each-way uh, chance. What was your selection again, Sean? I'm going to have to stick with um, Dream of Dreams. Dream of Dreams, OK. Uh, right, let's, uh, let's uh, make sure that you know where all the information is for Royal Ascot uh, 2021. And, of course, some call it a micro site. I like to call it a mega site. It is all the W's at the races .com forward slash Ascot. And, of course, you can win tickets there for Ascot on the Saturday if you put the word win Wherever you can find somewhere to type the word win, type the word win. And you have a chance to go to Royal Ascot. Absolute gold dust, those tickets. They are selling out like gold. Um, absolutely amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's have a look um, elsewhere. I just, because we've done the easy stuff. You know, no idea what's going to run in any of these races. We've done the easy ones. So now I'd like you to talk about the Duke of Cambridge, Kev. I fancy Lady Bothorp. It's a match-up again, isn't it? Lady Bo Bothorp yeah. and Queen Power Emma Banks. Uh, go again. You've got certain horses in there that are big, big prices. The likes of Agincourt, Lavender's Blue will be your each-way players. But that superstar there put up her best performance for me... Um, from a visual point of view, when she won around here at Ascot previously, obviously the run-up behind Palace Pier was a was a worldie, um, and um, 
she, she, for me, quite rightly sits at the top of the market as far as the Duke of Cambridge is concerned. When you look at the others that could run Queen Power, Thundering Knights, Angel Power, perhaps champs Elysee. Um, tell you one in here who's not a big price, double or bubble for Chris Wall. Looking for his first ever Gro um, Royal Ascot winner. Can you believe that? And I'm sure uh, double or bubble is related to something quite Mix decent. and mingle. That's the one. Um, wouldn't be impossible to run well with thanks as well for Haggis is in there. But Lady Beaufort, if she repeats that lock-in run, yes. she'd be the formal. She, she'd be the one. And, as I mentioned, that, that, that win around here when she came from the back of the pack um, was, was pretty spectacular. Have a look at the King Edward the Seventh stakes. Um, Baybridge, most progressive 7-2, to two, that kind of mark at the moment. Um, I've spoken to Ahmed Al-Sheikh, 50-50. You spirit goes in here. Yeah. Who was in the derby. There's so many in here. Right? Bay Bridge, Salamarak, Muhafeth, Salukan, I want to know about, Kev. He was my punt at a big price when he, um, for, for the derby, of course, he didn't run. And then he went and managed to win over a little bit further at Nace, I think it was, um, Sir, Sir Lucan, if he's going to come over. Lone Eagle may turn up. Alan Kerr, of course, who didn't run in the Dante because the ground wasn't right. You know, there's a whole host of horses in here. But you know, when you talk about the, the race being the coronation, if they were all to turn up, some of the names in here. Baybridge was put up £14 a stone for winning the London Gold Cup. Um, he's still nowhere near top rated in this and he has to step forward again. The second in that did get put up six and has come out and been beaten since. Yeah, he did get beat. Well, I fancied it. So, Luke and Kev, my, my ego, I don't know where he's going to go. He's got a whole host of entries. Yeah, sure. He could end up in the Queen's Vaz, I suppose. He clearly stays well. Uh, I, look, I like the other sir for Aidan O'Brien. Uh, Salamarak. Salamarak. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he was very impressive at Leopardstown. It, it, a little bit like the Fav here in, in a handicap but did it really, really stylish. They came from a long way back, ran very fast, late. And uh, he was my sneaky fancy for the derby as well, but he missed an engagement with the Chester, and then he didn't go to Epsom. So you'd be a little bit worried that things maybe haven't been straightforward since Leopardstown. But I think this trip, this track, the type of ground he's going to get, and it'll all play to his strengths. And look, he needs to improve clearly. He's rated only 100, but I'd say there's plenty of ability in there. Um, as you'd expect, like gorgeous pedigree by Camelot from the, the family of, you know, Galileo and Sea the Stars, etc. Um, really fluent Uber. So I'd say he'd love really fast ground. So he'd be, I'd, I'd go with him over Baybridge. If you're worried about Baybridge on fast ground, he's never met anything like it before and he, he lifts his knee quite a bit. If either the Haggis pair ran, Alan Kerr would beat Adair. Yeah, yeah. And Mohafef. Yeah. I mean, Mohafef could Yeah, yeah both, both, both those two. I mean, they're still under the could be anything. When he, I was saying, if they all turned up in the coronation, mm. we, we've got an absolute worldie. If they all turn up in this, be one of the one of the most talked about group twos that you will find going in there with all the, the potential on show. Could be an absolute bloodbath, couldn't it? With Wesley Ward response. I think he's got nine runners all told and seven of them... Um, juveniles, you know, he, Wesley could have an absolute rout as far as the two-year-old division is concerned. Well, he's not going to win the Coventry. He's not going to win the Coventry. No, he's got coffee with his maker. rocket. With his rocket. Coffee maker in there, yeah, the old coffee maker, um, who won by six and a quarter lengths at Keeneland first time out um, by Jimmy Creed out of a Montbrook mare, owned by Gregory Kaufman is the coffee maker. Brilliant colours, actually, when you see this horse run. Uh, seven to two, but won't win. Masita at six, Kanamosto at seven, Gisborne at seven. The thing with the two-year-olds is, and I think it's probably the worst and the hardest job I've ever asked to do is talk about two-year-old races at Royal Alaska before you have any idea, because most of the two-year-olds in the UK have looked fairly moderate, I think. But... This is the coffee maker. Yeah, look, and, and Wesley said started off on tell, dirt, um, as a, a lot of his representatives have, but he, she, he has worked her on the turf and she absolutely loved it. So that's going to be a, a positive as far as she is concerned. And she's already, under his own admission, outrun her pedigree, if you like, but the one that's training and tearing the barn down at the moment. So that's why he's decided to, to run her against the boys in the Coventry. Yeah, for those who... Oh, Matt, Matt, I've got one for you. Have you? I've got one for you. I've been saving myself. I'm going to ask you a question now. Oh. Wesley Ward has had eight two-year-old winners at Royal Ascot. What's the common denominator between them all? Phillies. Five furlongs. Oh. <laughs> it's zero from 18 over six furlongs. 
and only two of them have hit the frame. And I and I and I know he knows this. And I, I strongly suspect listening to him the last couple of years, he sees it as a bit of a monkey on his back. And he's he's been trying to win over six and he's put a few nice horses in there rather than five. And he hasn't hit the mark yet. And I'm sure he'll get there at some stage. But I got to take on this filly, I think. She's a filly against the boys. Six furlongs. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to take on the coffee maker. Yeah. Really? Because I was sent a list that said you wanted to highlight that the coffee maker is going to win. I, uh, that's not the list I gave. <laughs> okay. hey, listen, and you know, we were talking earlier on, boys, about John Gosden, um, how, you know, his sort of horses that he will have, it, searching for the Royal Ascot two-year-olds. They don't just pop off the, the page at you. You haven't got one. Well, Dabab, um, if he decides to run in here, look really, really good when winning at Leicester. He's a breeze-up purchase anyway, so he's obviously knew his job. They were very, very patient with him. The second was right up in the van, um, a, a well-touted runner of Archie Watson's. This came from three quarters down the field and absolutely zipped through to win really convincingly. Hands and heels underneath Robert Havlin. Dabab, 10 to 1 each way, a massive player in here. Kev, just the one thing with the, two, the Ward horses, and look, I think Wesley Ward is an incredible trainer. I just think he's absolutely mustard. Um, the ground might be a key factor in that Fast last round. year, lots of rain. Like, this time mm. around, it looks sunny every day for Ascot. And for these American horses in particular, that might make a huge... I mean, if it happened to be good to firm come Coventry Stakes Day, which it could easily be, isn't it? I mean, it only, it put it like this, it only won't be good to firm if they've watered. Otherwise, it's got to be good to firm. Yeah, and Johnny, so, and Johnny Velasquez is coming over. Yeah. Johnny Velasquez is quarantined at the moment. That ground condition, though, Kev, might make a bit of difference. Oh, it'll help. And look, there's logic kind of behind the stats. Look, we know what makes these Wesley Ward two-year-olds so good at Royal Ascot is they have an edge. You know, they have excellent gate speed. They have excellent early speed. And they can, they can kill races by halfway. But it's just, you know, six furlongs at Ascot is stiff at this time of year for, for a two-year-old especially. And... Over the years, they've tended just to get a little bit stretched by it. So, look, a, a faster surface would clearly help them in that regard. But And, look, I, I, he probably will have a six-furlong winner at some stage because you look at the, the type of horse he brings over now. Like, a lot of his big guns this year, you know, are European bred. You know, he's got a son of Ribchester there. Or, sorry, a filly by Ribchester. He's got a, another one by National Defence. You know, they're, they're European-bred horses that are bred to stay a little bit further. So I'm sure it'll happen for them at some stage, but I've been wheeling out that sat for a few years now and I haven't got caught yet, so I'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny you should mention that, Kevin. Like, the stat is fantastic, but also Ruthin, who you mentioned, the Ribchester, is back down over the minimum in the Queen Mary. You know, so it's, it's one of those, isn't it? Strange one how he's gone that strong with Coffee Maker. Yeah, it's, it, I, I just I do get the impression that he thinks about it and he yeah. wants to have a winner over six furlongs. And I've no doubt that he, that coffee maker is working really, really well, and he's hopeful. But you know, you go into the you go into the unknown zone there in the last hundred yards over six at Ascot if, you, if you're a West Ward two year old. And yeah, I'm sure it'll be a sweet one if if he gets one over the line. But I'll keep taking him on. And ironically, we talked about the fast ground, but Ruthin is out of a Selkirk mare, so I <laughs> might be the one Wes Ward, actually, that would have gone with a bit of cut in the ground. But that's kind of around 7-2, to two, I think, for the Queen Mary at the moment. Um, you quite like the look of Nymphadora, Jason, and I know that, that Kevin quite likes the look of Desert Dreamer, who has been back today, actually, for the Queen Mary stakes. Maybe Kevin just lumping on before he, he gives his selection away tonight, just beating <laughs> the price. Um, tell us about Desert Dreamer, Kev. Yeah, look, she, she's still quite low profile. She's 25 to 1 or so, I think, still. Um, and I've just been very impressed with her twice. You know, they, they haven't been able to go fast enough for her. Um, she's Like, she's been quite free on, in both occasions and heavy cover. She didn't get open country until quite late and, and showed a great turn of foot to, to win both her starts. And with something like Ruth and, uh, and Twilight Gleaming from America going 100 miles an hour from the gates... You know, I think it'll be the first time in her life that she's actually going as fast as she wants. And, and it might just bring her forward a bit. You know, she's trained by Stuart Williams, who, you know, is a fantastic trainer, but, you know, wouldn't be known for Royal Aska two-year-olds. That's why she's the price she is. But I can see her shortening up now. I think she's a very sharp, very fast two-year-old. And this type of race with this type of speed in front of her will be a big help to her.
Yeah, and, and, and me, Nymphadoria was actually behind her, wasn't she, uh, when they when they met up at Newmarket. It was Stuart Williams, his first two-year-old winner on the Roly Mile, debutant anyway, for like a long, long time. Even he was amazed as far as the stat was concerned. But Nymphadoria, she came out, she stepped forward... She won the Marygate um, at, uh, at York. Um, the, the form, I think, was very strong. She looked... You know when one catches your eye walking around the prelims, you're nearly saying, wow, she, she looks sort of three-year-old material against the juveniles at that time. Andrew Balding, I think, has got even better as a trainer. Um, all sorts of pedigrees, all distances... All, 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 all um, trained at that magnificent base of his. I think he's had his best ever start to a campaign with a whole host of horses. Th this could be really special for me, Nymphadoria. OK, mm. let's have a look at the Albany Stakes as well. Another two-year-old race called Six Furlongs for the Phillies. And Flotus, hello you, Cache Oscula, who was so impressive for the Buffy uh, just the other day at Epsom, really did just power clear. Betting on screen for you. Um, Kevin, here, I think prettiest is one that you believe might have a little bit of a squeak. Yeah, look, a few of these have looked like absolute rocket ships. Uh, Flotus looked like a rocket at, uh, at Goodwood. Hello You looked, looked really good on the all-weather. Prettiest wasn't as visually spectacular as those, but she was probably running in a deeper race at Navin over the extended five. Um, look, as you'd expect, like, like particularly nice pedigree um, by Dubawi out of Alice Springs. And I, I just really like it. You can, you can even see it from the stills. I just really like the way she carries herself. Like, she lowers herself. She really tries. Uh, and I thought she was just very, very professional. Um, traditionally, I, I tend to prefer one of Aidens to have two runs going to Ascot, just because they seem to benefit from the experience. But she looked particularly professional the first time. So I'll be happy to take my chance with her. Uh, I was just impressed with her. Really liked her. I think she'll come forward a good bit from that debut, and uh, and hopefully she'll go well. Um, just just a, a note there in the betting there. Contarelli Chapel. Uh, she won't run. Um, I think she had a small setback when she was beaten there a couple of weeks ago, and she's not going to make it. Yeah, just... ca ca Cache goes in there, doesn't she? I think possibly, possibly, and she worked underneath Nicola Curry um, yesterday morning or this morning, I think it was up at, up at Newmarket. So um, we, we all have been banging the drum regarding Holly Doyle or a Haley Turner, and they've been fantastic at this particular meeting. It'd be great for Nicola, who's had a really tough time of it, you know, and she, she hasn't lost her ability whatsoever. If if Cache was to actually go and give her a, a chance of a big win in the Albany. Yeah, so having a look at the betting there on screen, um, Flotus at 7-2 to two on the board. Hello you, 11-2. to two. Prettiest for Kevin Blake there at 8-1, to 10-1 to one bar. Point um, Lonsdale was... In the Chesham? Wow. I've got the wow. winner of the Chesham, but we'll go Have to you? Kev first. Um, what, what, was it a weak race or was he just very, very good that he managed to win? Yeah, I'd say he's a rocket, Jason. Um, very unusual for, for an Australia to be out as early as he was. And, God, he was impressive now. Very good on the clock. You know, very strong late on. You know, just what you want for the Chesham, really. You know, sometimes you can get kind of sneaky ones there. That it's, it's, it has a funny set of qualifications. And sometimes you can get ones that are, that are sharper than their pedigree suggests they should be. I'd say this fella will be, you know, a 10 furlong horse in due course. But I'd say, I'd say it could be very good. Uh, for an Australia to do that first time is unusual. And uh, I'd say he, he's going to end up being a, quite a short price for the session. Yeah, he could, he could easily be the, the and point and shoot as far as he is concerned. Would um, Kadamosta, will, it, will he get take his chance possibly in the Norfolk? Um, I thought that he looked good early on. He's, had a, is he not, he's been a non-runner on a whole host of times, hasn't he? Yeah, literally kind of four or five times. They, they've been, you know, it, it was tricky for some of those ASCA two-year-olds in Ireland that kind of got out and made a winning debut in April. And we just had a horrendous May. The ground went very soft and it went got cold. And in fairness, it's probably an indication of the kind of regard they hold this fella in that they didn't want to chance him. And like he was heavy odds on a few times when they were pulling him out. So they've been very careful with him. And look, the, their patience will be rewarded, I suppose, because they'll get the ground they want for him at Ascot, almost certainly. Um, again, as mentioned a few minutes ago, you'd like an Aiden horse to have had at least two runs going there. But, um, you know, we have seen horses of his win there after with, one, with one run, and he did look good and professional at Dundalk. So, 
yeah, he's definitely very interesting. They, they've really minded him. Masakella will win the Chesham. Masakella. Masakella. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Andrew Boarding, one first time at Goodwood. Yep. Uh, five to one currently. I, not everyone will back horses each way at five to one. I'd have a bet each way now at five to one. Um, I think Murphy will ride. And I think it will be his best chance of a winner, possibly even of the week ahead of Starman. Ooh. I was just interested, I was just having um, Googling here a bit of Ed Walker on uh, Starman. Uh, came from the dark, he's not going to run at Royal Ascot, which Kevin oh, might okay. There we go. That makes um, sense. He's not running at all. He's had a little setback. So that forget about him at a big price uh, in the Darman Jubilee. Um, handicaps, always tricky. Anything catch your eye at the moment, Kevin Blake? Surely Joseph's got something tucked away that has been, you know... Laid out, I think, is the phrase you people in racing use, isn't it? <laughs> laid out. Yeah, yeah, there'll be an awful lot of horses laid out for Royal Ascot for, for, in the, for the handicaps from an awful lot of yards, Matt, and they can't all win. Uh, so Joseph will have a good few runners. No, but I'm which sure, one but... have you laid out? Ah, that, oh, I tell you. <laughs> uh, there's a horse called, well, I'll give you what, there's a horse called Benno that'll probably run in the King George V. Um, I, I, you know... That that in race in particular is extremely tough, um, and you don't want to get too far back. And he's the type of horse that misses the kick, so it's probably going to be up against it at the get go. But but I think he's quite nice. I tell you, there's one in the same race, and he's very. He was only kind of brought to my his his mark was only brought to my attention this evening, and it's an absolutely fascinating one. A horse called Title, trained by Roger Varian. He's worth having a good look at. This horse, he's by Camilla. He's a high clear horse. Read his form. And tell me how they've arrived at a mark of 92. I, I think this is an extremely generous piece of handicapping. Look, it's handicapping. You can make a case to put a horse in at a mark. But he, he beat a horse called Sea Carrots of Willem Haggis's last time. We really well regarded Philly that had been second to Mystery Angel in a listed race the time before. And he gave her the sex that was five pounds, beat her with a bit to spare now. She's rated 97, and he, they've given him a mark of 92. You know, to give him a mark of 92, you have to have seat cards, you know, running over stone below form. And look, you can make a case for it, but I think it's an extremely generous piece of handicapping. And it, it'll get him into whatever race they want. I assume he'll run to the King George the fifth handicap. Um, and look, it's a dangerous thing talking about these things before the prices and entries come out and everything else. But you wouldn't need to be Sherlock Holmes to find this fella now. And I suspect he'll be put in his favour whenever it gets priced up. I just think that's an extremely generous piece of handicapping. Tell you who's not, um, it might just fly under the radar, if he goes in the Copper Horse Handicap, is Raymond Tusk, oh, yeah. who was a, oh, a, was a very, very decent type for the, for the Hannon team. He's gone across, he's had a few runs now, but not many. I think it's about three for, for Alan King, and bumped into Illarab of uh, William Haggis's uh, at York last time. That's a good horses in behind him, the likes of Throne Hall, all horses who looked a little bit in front of their mark. So he's not exactly thrown in, he's not hiding anything from anybody, but from where he sits at the moment, at around about 14 to 1, he'd be a good each-way play in the, the Copper Horse Handicap. I love Roger Varian horses at Royal Ascot in handicaps as well, particularly when they're Sheikh Mohammed obeyed. Um, one, for example, could be Lord Campari, who goes in the Hunt Cup. Yep. He ran against Palace Pier in the Lockinge. He's 50 to 1. He had no chance in that off of sort of BHA rating of just over 100, but would be a completely different proposition in something like the Hunt Cup. Um, but I like those Varian horses. I think yep. he's a good plotter, Roger Varian, of those kind of handicaps. So I'll be looking for anything of uh, Roger's. Um, right, this is the moment basically you've been waiting for, though. These are the good things, the lays, the each-way shots of the meeting. Let's start with Kevin. The Irish are going to finish first, second, third, fourth and fifth in every race at Royal Ascot Lake. <laughs> well, uh, well, as you see, I've napped an English horse. <laughs> Banana. Yeah, I've, I've, I've gone for Desert Dreamer. It's just, you know, we're a little bit far out from the action now, but I, I know she's an intended runner. I think she's very much overpriced at the minute. Um, and I just think the race will really suit her. You know, maybe she'll come up short class-wise, but I think you're getting a fair price. So I've made her nap. I like to nap a big-priced one. 
I hope that you laugh at it, Matt, and we, we can get a nice little video clip again out of this. That'd be, that'd be super. Uh, <laughs> so and I've, I've got it for prettiest, too. We spoke about a few minutes ago in the Albany States um, in terms of two-year-olds. We've seen Ireland. Um, she'd be fairly high up on my list. And the old boy, Matt, coming back from the fracture, Batash, I'm going to gonna make him my lay of the week. So I know my fate early there. OK, so I'm going to be the world's best sprinter is a lay of the meeting. For Kevin Blake, that's <laughs> very, very for. harsh of you. I'd say very harsh. Yeah, that he's the right, world's best sprinter. Let's get them up. We'll we'll go nap time as well. And uh, I've actually gone against Kevin in that particular race um, early on Maybe. with Nymphadora. Um, I, I was just so taken with her um, up at York, and she she just looks from a physical that she's going to be very very tough to beat over the stiff five furlongs there. Um, told you about John Gosden mentioning that he's not going to have a whole boatload of um, juveniles or, or three-year-old runners at the meeting. Um, Debab, he popped up at Leicester, won in really, really good fashion from the back of the pack. Um, and I've, I've gone for the lay, Bay Bridge. What have you got against Bay Bridge? What, just... what have you got? Did Sir Michael never put you up? No, he did. He did. <laughs> um, Sir Lamarack, Mohafeth, Sir Lucan, Alan Kerr, Lone Eagle. There are a whole boatload in there going against him. You know, all improvers. You had to pick one. You had to find one, didn't you? We were asked to. And so I've gone with him. It's funny, though. We said... The, the horse he beat got beat, but it was King Frankel who, who arguably should have won. Well, not because yeah, and he was, he was he given... Was, he, was he was unlucky not pound, to win. He was put up £6 as well. But, uh, look, Baybridge got put up £14. The handicapper doesn't get it wrong that often, but there are quite a few in there that have you know, still got the similar sort of profile to improve again. So that was the reason to take him on, Matthew. You've got to have a reason to take one <laughs> on, and you've got to have a reason to nap one. Now, the brains from Ireland has laid one that the you really like. Has <laughs> laid, laid one, one that yeah. you really like. <laughs> well, if Sir Michael, if you're watching the preview show tonight, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that Weaver says your horse cannot win. Uh, go um, on. Well, let's see your three. Let's see them no, up there. We, look, the people are waiting. You have to build up this kind of tension. So, nap of the meeting. I know you think I've got Palace Fear in there, but I haven't. He's, of course, oh, the right. world's great sprinter. <laughs> because Kevin Blake is just a banana. What a great head-to-head -head this is. Oh, what a great head-to-head -head this Apparently is. Apparently, he's too old at the age of seven. That, of course, does rule out Stradivarius as well and many other big names at Royal Ascot 2021. They're just too old. Kevin would have shoved them off to the field by now. But I still think he's old enough at the age of seven to do it. The Tatney, of course, was winning at the age of 11, having been in a so King's So you've Stanley. attacked Kevin there, yeah. but you've <laughs> gone with him with the coffee maker, the stat, zero from 18 over six furlongs, haven't you? So you, you've attacked him but agreed with him. Well, I'm laying the coffee maker. <laughs> I don't want a filly against the Colts. I don't think this is, this is worthy of being the favourite for that race. It's all about hype. Um, the coffee maker uh, has to be taken on. And I think an each-way bet is chinned it. And the St James's Palace stakes, I think you could do a lot worse than that. And when Batash... Hacks up in the Kings. Now I'll be chinning oh, this one like an uppercut. <laughs> uppercut. <laughs> Chinned it. Um, oh, well, uh, what about those gold dust tickets? Oh, the gold dust tickets. Have they not gone yet? Oh, Surely someone's two type pairs. win by then. Comment win. Look at that. That was a right hook, that one. Hey, and Blake could go a bit. Honestly. People would pay to watch that. I've just, I've just remembered People how... People would pay to watch that. You're a division I, or two heavier than Blake, happen. though, aren't oh, you? Definitely. Honestly, I just remembered I how Tyson felt against... Old our boy there, he would miss by a mile, Blakey. <laughs> oh, ticket winners, win. Um, the winners are going to be announced tomorrow. Uh, and you us. could be going to Royal Ascot on the Saturday. Get your flow test done or whatever it is and you, you'll be away. How many tests have you got to take next week? I think three of them. Two, two. Two? Two, unless you're there uh, rigging um, in the early part. And you may well be, so you can take three. <laughs> Kevin, thank you very much. Yeah, bye-bye, Kev. Yeah, yeah. Nice to have Matt, you with Matt us. Chapman, Matt Chapman wouldn't be known for turning up early, that's for sure. Hey! <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, says the two people who actually did bother to turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do it on Zoom. I can't really be bothered to come across. Thanks. Skype, um, Skype. Right. Skype, what? Skype. It's on Skype. <laughs> Goodbye.